Here's how to make an 800 megahertz band cellular phone jammer. This is a device which will create a sweeping RF carrier on the mobile handset received frequencies. This will uh, drop any uh, calls in progress or it will prevent the uh, uh, cell phone from receiving or uh, making calls. Uh, we're gonna, in this example, we're going to be using the 800 megahertz band. Um, there's all sorts of different cellular phone frequencies. And that concept is going to be the same for all the different bands. The key to the jammer is a device called the Voltage Controlled Oscillator, or VCO. It's this little silver box right here. It has a RF output, which is a, in the general frequency range, which you want to dram, jam. Um, these VCOs uh, you can purchase commercially from places like uh, Mini Circuits or Z Communications. It uh, should be run off a regulated 5 volts. and. Uh, there's a pin on the VCO called the voltage tune. And that's uh, where we want to concentrate the uh, study in. This uh, voltage tune line, as the voltage on this line varies in this example from uh, 0 to 5 volts, the uh, frequency output of the VCO will vary from 790 to 890 megahertz. So, say we want to jam between 850 megahertz and 890 megahertz, we would need to sweep the voltage to line. We can do that by creating a triangle wave with a peak to peak voltage of approximately two volts. And we need to give the triangle wave an offset, a DC offset of three volts. In this example, the triangle wave frequency is gonna be 100 kilohertz. And the jammer here um, that I made, I'm using the XR2206 uh, function generator to generate the triangle wave, which is in the frequency is determined by these, uh, there's two components, a single capacitor and a single resistor. They should be of uh, high quality because you don't want uh, temperature changes to affect your uh, performance. Three potentiometers are just below it right here. Um, I have a switch between two different bands, two different sweeping ranges, that's just optional. The uh, multi-turn potentiometers give, are for the DC offset. You can adjust the uh, DC offset. And this blue potenti you know, potentiometer right here is uh, the amplitude of the triangle wave output of the uh, 2206. By varying the amplitude, as you can see, That'll affect the uh, sweep range of the uh, jammer. I can show that uh, in a bit on the spectrum analyzer. It's much easier to tune and see. The output of the VCO, I have a little SMA jumper. It connects up to a Hitachi PF0030 RF power module. I found this uh, RF power module on an old uh, Radio Shack analog cellular phone. It has a, uh, a variable RF output between 1 and 8 watts. And it also has a uh, improvised SWR protection circuit here. If the SWR gets too high, it creates a uh, voltage off this shot key diode and shunts the uh, power control voltage to ground. There's only uh, four pins on the RF power module. RF input your VAPC, or your automatic power control, your VDD, which is your main plus 12, and your RF output. That's already set for 50 ohms, so it's all ready to go. And I have a TNC jack panel mount for the uh, antenna connection, which you can uh, get, sometimes get these antennas from uh, old cellular phones themselves. This is the cell phone I got the uh, RF power module from it's a Radio Shack CT1055. If you ever see these at a ham fest, make sure you grab them. Here's what the stock board looks like. You can see how it's mounted on its own little aluminum heat sink. You want to out, salvage this uh, heat sink. Um, when you tighten up these screws, don't tighten them too tight, otherwise, you can crack the internal circuit board. You do want a thin, very, very thin smear of heat sink grease between the flange and the aluminum uh, heat sink. This is a 10 volt voltage regulator um, with 
excessive uh, noise filtering. Uh, I did this in case you want to power it off of vehicles, uh, like a cigarette lighter or something. The power supply tends to be really noisy, so you want to have a, a, a voltage spike protection and a fuse. You can run the power module at 10 volts if you want to lower the RF output a little bit. It'll also reduce the current draw. Um, the current draw on this jammer at maximum RF output is around 2 amps for about 8 watts of a RF output. You can vary when you uh, Oh, there's a potentiometer on the front for the RF power control. Just You vary the output by varying the voltage on this uh, power control pin. Uh, you can lower it down to 1 watt RF output and it only draws around, uh, I think, a little over half an amp at 1 watt. So if you want to use it for like, battery powered operations or something. I'll show a spectrum analyzer view of the uh, jammer in operation. I'm going to bypass the RF power module, not to, so I don't blow up the spectrum analyzer. The spectrum analyzer is centered at 880 megahertz, and it's a uh, 10 megahertz per division. So you can see that's about 895 right about here. 80, 70, about 860 right about here. You can. See Off to the side here, you can see the. It doesn't show up well, but you can see the triangle wave and the DC offset. This is going into the voltage two line on the VCO. I'm going to adjust the uh, amplitude of the triangle wave coming out of the 2206. You should be able to see how the uh, sweeping range varies. I'm going to adjust the DC offset and that basically controls the uh, start range of the jammer itself. As you can see, it really helps to have a spectrum analyzer to uh, tune these. Again, this will be the... This is the sweep amplitude, triangle wave amplitude. And your uh, DC offset. And that should uh, get you started at least for something. <laughs>